I'm Eric Rubin. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. A grenade makes for a tricky situation in Pasadena, and a local snack food distributor is about to go on a diet. But first, making headlines. Today is a first for Week in Review, as Eric and I will report news before, during, and after it actually happens. Did you get all that? All at the same time? The biggest story of the past few weeks has been the process of selecting a new county executive to replace John Leopold. Well, a lot of the big developments have occurred right after we taped the show, which aired right after they happened. Got all that? Don't worry, I'll just keep talking and you can read the crawl at the bottom of your screen revealing who was chosen. Now, maybe you already know because you liked Week in Review on Facebook and we told you last night. Maybe you're waiting for me to tell you. Maybe you are hoping I guessed correctly that the new county executive is John Hammond, Steve Hsu, or Kendall Ehrlich. Either way, by this moment, you've actually known who was chosen by the county council. Now, we need a week in review time machine for all this, Eric. We, we absolutely do. Hop in the DeLorean, yeah. head back in time. Didn't they do that in Wayne's World? Didn't they go back in time? Yeah, they did. <laughs> That's how they went back in time. We Wouldn't that be that. cool? And we could record back in time by Huey Lewis? Yeah. Yeah. We could get lottery numbers from last week's lotto, or from yeah. the week's coming lottery. Hey, that's brilliant. I know. We could guess the lotto numbers. I know. Guess the lotto numbers. Guess the lotto numbers. And we could tell you here and we can review. That would be amazing. Oh, yeah. I like that. And then we'd be rich. <laughs> yeah. What's that, Chuck? Rich. They know what happened now? I can stop talking now? Okay. There you have it, folks. Our new county executive. We wish him or her well. Well, Kristen, it's got to be one of the weirdest segments we've ever done here on the really? show. Really? Can you say that with certainty? Ah, uh, no, actually I can't. But it feels like you're in a time pocket or something. I know. You're just talking and talking and talking. <laughs> you know what? We're going to move on. We need to move on to some real news that actually happened before our deadline. A grenade, you say? Firefighters found a grenade in Pasadena. We need to know more about this. So a lady was walking out, walking with her dog on Saturday afternoon, February 17th in Green Haven. She looks over and sees this. Anne Arundel County Fire Investigators, along with Annapolis City Emergency Services Unit personnel, removed the device and rendered it safe. They didn't determine whether the device was live or fake. So, Kristen, I have to ask you, what do you think? Was it a real grenade or not? I don't know. I mean, uh, well, you got your grenades, you got your landmines. Paul is pretty specific about what a grenade is, what a landmine is. Dave Abrams Who? will tell you all about it. What? Yeah. I don't understand. What are you talking oh. about? <laughs> grenades. grenades are, when I was in the military, we went to a grenade range and actually threw live hand grenades. So I, wow. I probably would have been able to know. Did they what, mind? What? The grenades? No, they're grenades. You just throw grenades. That's all you do. Sure, Eric. Okay. For some reason, our producer is <laughs> obsessed with this story. He wants to know what to do if it had a pin in it. What do you, what if you find one in your basement? You call Snooky. It makes a difference if the pin is missing. The answer is the same. Run! Don't walk. Especially Get out of there. I don't care if run it's from red Snooki. and looks plastic. Just run. What is all this Snooky <laughs> stuff? And Polly D, what are we on Jersey Shore? I'll tell you when you're older, Eric. <laughs> when I'm older. I'm just not cultured enough to understand this. Thing. The, well, the grenade thing was not the only thing the fire department was busy with this week. Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to more than 1,364 calls for service. This included 1,081 emergency medical calls and 76 fire calls. This week, a vehicle collision injured an Edgewater man, fire damaged a vacant building in Glen Burnie, and fire, five fire department personnel were honored at a promotional ceremony. To tell us more about all of these stories is Division Chief Keith Swindle of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief. Thanks, Kristen. At approximately 1.30 a.m. on Saturday, February 16th, Anne Arundel County firefighters responded to a reported vehicle collision in the 800 block of Hillside Avenue in Edgewater. Upon arrival, rescue personnel found the driver of a Honda Civic trapped in a vehicle that had struck a home. Firefighters utilizing specialized hydraulic rescue tools worked about 45 minutes to free the trapped occupant. The patient, an adult male, suffered serious injuries and was transported by ambulance to the University of Maryland Shock Trauma Center. The cause of the collision remains under investigation. The home was occupied at the time, however, no one was injured. The second incident occurred at approximately 5.30 p.m. on Monday, February 18th, when the Anne Arundel County Fire Department received multiple 911 calls reporting a building fire in the 400 block of Crane Highway North in Glen Burnie. The first unit to arrive at the scene reported fire evident from the second floor of a vacant two-story multi-occupancy building. Crews immediately requested a second alarm, bringing approximately 50 firefighters to the scene. 
Due to the unsafe conditions within the building, fire operations were conducted from the exterior of the structure. The incident was brought under control at 6.30 p.m. The building suffered approximately $10,000 in damage as a result of the blaze, with the cause of the fire remaining under investigation. No injuries were suffered as a result of this incident. Finally, Thursday, February 21st, marked a milestone for five members of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. At that time, Fire Chief John Robert Ray honored members who were promoted to the rank of captain and lieutenant within the department at an official ceremony acknowledging their years of hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. Promoted to the rank of captain are Timothy Kernan and Michael Falsgraf. Promoted to the rank of lieutenant were Patrick Carmody, Robert Cornell, and Jesse Spencer. Kristen? Thanks, Chief, and congratulations to all of our newly promoted officers. Well, folks, there's more Week in Review to come, but no grenades, I promise you. So check out the community calendar for events around your county. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Welcome back. On February 18, 2013, at approximately 6.35 p.m., members of the Western District's Tactical Narcotics Team and Tactical Patrol Unit, assisted by officers of the Special Operations Section, executed a search and seizure warrant targeting drug violations at 415 Pine Terrace in Glenbury. Join us now as Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy, who has further details on the investigation. Justin. Upon searching the residence, detectives seized about 2,400 grams of suspected marijuana, estimated at $48,000 uh, over that actually just a little bit. Also located in the residence was a Glock 21 handgun, a Ruger P89 handgun, a shotgun, a Precision 223 rifle, and an FM SCAR rifle, along with 6,000 rounds of assorted ammo. Now additionally, a, a large amount of suspected steroids was recovered along with $17,819 in currency that was seized from that residence as well. Two suspects were arrested and charged. A third suspect has charges pending, and that's pending the outcome of the analysis of the suspected steroids. Suspect number one is Harrison Walcott Hickman, age 23, of that address, 415 Pine Terrace in Glen Burnie. Charges are as follows, possession of CDS marijuana, possession of CDS with intent to distribute marijuana, along with possession of CDS not marijuana, possession with intent, not marijuana, also along with possession of CDS paraphernalia. He was also charged with possession of a firearm in relation to a drug trafficking crime. Now, the second subject arrested was Samantha Beatty, age 23, also of that address, 415 Pine Terrace in Glen Burnie. Her charges were possession of CDS marijuana, also CDS with intent to distribute marijuana, possession of CDS not marijuana, and possession with intent to distribute, also not marijuana. She also got hit with possession of CDS paraphernalia and that same firearm charge as the aforementioned suspect. Now, folks, as always, if you have information on any of the crimes or suspects we mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. That number is available 24 hours a day, toll free at 1-866-7-LOCKUP. You can also text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274-637. Your third option, visit the website, www.metrocrimestoppers.net. Now remember folks, those calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might even be eligible for a cash reward of up to $2,000. Back to you. Thanks, Justin. 
Well, Mark Chang always has all the great community events for us. This he week, always he, does. He, he does. does a great job. He does a really great job. Yes. This week, he's with Tanya McCoy to talk about an upcoming conference for women called Mind, Spirit, and Pocketbook. Sounds like something I should attend. Yes, it does. Mark. Especially the pocketbook. <laughs> Thanks to both of you in the studio. I'm over here today with Ms. Tanja McCoy, and we're going to talk about a great event that's coming up to help women get balance in their life and also gain their financial goals. And Tanja, always great to see you on the community. You're always doing so much for the folks out there in all over Anne Arundel County. But you've got a wonderful event that you're on the um, uh, that you're chairing um, um, part of. And so, uh, could you tell us about that event? Uh, yes, on um, April the 13th. Uh, at the Radisson Cross Keys in Baltimore, uh, Northern Parkway, we're hosting a women's conference, the Greater Baltimore Section for National Council of Negro Women. And this conference is to market women throughout East Coast from the Big Apple all the way to Virginia. And the purpose of the conference is our, our, our subtitle is Mind, Body, and Pocketbook. So when we say that uh, we're going to have three workshops that the participants will attend, uh, one with Dr. Shannon, one with Dr. Renee Parks, and one with Zen uh, Smith from Zen's Accounting Services. And they will be getting all this powerful information because our mission for these women are to lead, to advocate, and to develop them so that they could be able to provide services to their families and their communities. So it's an empowerment conference. So African-American women of descent will gain all this knowledge and this intelligence and this empowerment and uplifting, and then they will take it and use what they can to better their community. Um, also, the highlight of the conference is Susan Taylor from Essence Magazine, who is our keynote speaker. So we're happy to have her on the national level. And she's also the founder of National Cares Mentoring Movement, which is also a strong mentoring program for boys. Okay. And so those, those are some key things that will be happening on that day. That's great. I understand there's a lot of women already from Anne Arundel County have signed up. And for folks out there, ladies out there who would like to sign up for the uh, um, conference, how can they do that? Yeah, um, one way to sign up for the conference is you can go to our website and you can go online, which is um, www.gbs-ncnw.org. Or you can mail a check um, to the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 23942, Baltimore, Maryland, and it's 21203. And the conference cost is $140. Um, and that also includes, besides the workshops that they're going to have that morning, the lunch with the keynote speaker, there is also a panel discussion. And within that panel discussion, we would talk on the word LEAP. And LEAP stands for Leadership, Entrepreneurship, Advocacy, and Philanthropy. So they're going to get even more. You know, we're just giving them more and more and more and more. And um, we also have a, a special discount for uh, the collegiate chapters or any college that would like to attend. Um, we have Morgan State, uh, Coppin University, Townsend University, and Anne Arundel Community College that we're going to have students coming from. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tanja. I love that acronym, LEAP. That's a great, wonderful acronym. Um, do, do you have a telephone number and an email address that viewers can get hold of you at? Yes. Um, you can reach me at Tanja McCoy at YMail.com. And that's T-O-N-J-A-M-C-C-O-Y at YMail.com. And my phone number is 443 443- Four five three two nine seven nine, and if you can't reach me there, you can leave a message at the uh, GBS um, um, phone number, which would be um, that number is four ten four four three four zero six six two six nine. So again, that number would be four four three four zero six six two six nine. And either way, I'll, you know, I'll get the message. Great. Thank you very much, Tanja. Well, I know you're very busy. I know you got to get back out there and uh, helping someone out there or some, help some community. So really appreciate all the work that you do. And uh, definitely viewers out there, circle your cal calendars, all ladies out there. Get your day planners out, your iPhones, and mark it on your calendar. And uh, we hope to see you out there. Reporting with Ms. Tanja McCoy over in Glen Burnie. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mark. Well, I was kind of hoping with a name like that it was more about Prada bags, but not really. Sounds like a great conference to me still. It's pretty straight on the mind and spirit, but I think it's the pocketbook I might need to work on. 
Up next, spring is coming and Carolyn Ryan joins Sandra Hesch to review the spring and summer program guide in this week's Recreation and Parks Spotlight. Ladies. Well, folks, it's that time again. Our program guide is out. This is our spring and summer program guide for 2013, and it has tons of information about all of our spring programs, our summer programs, and our summer camps. I'm here with Sandra Heisch, who is our media and technical specialist for Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks. And Sandra, tell us a little bit about what kind of fun things are in this program guide? Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, we have wonderful programs and events listed in the summer, in well, spring and summer program guide. Um, all of our summer camps are listed in this guide. Also, we have wonderful spring rec programs. We have all our aquatic classes for the North Arundel Aquatic Center and also the Arundel Olympic Swim Center. And we also have all our spring and summer park events also listed in the guide. So it's chock full with lots of information for all ages, for families and friends to enjoy throughout the um, Mar March through August. Great. Now, where can folks find a copy of our Spring and Summer Program Guide? Okay. Well, our guide is down, you can download our guide on our website, and our website is www.aacounty.org slash recparks. Also, you can pick up the guide at any of the local public libraries um, at our elementary schools or other government agencies. Great. Now, um, Summer camps are huge, and, and folks are always looking for summer camp information, and we've got some great ones here. Anything special this year? With our summer camps, we have summer camps that run all from June through August. We also, um, there's a lot of different ages and a lot of different activities. If your child is interested in drama, you can sign up for a drama camp. We have sports specific camps. We also have different activities for crafts and just, it just encompasses everything for a child's needs and also their ability and their ages. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And folks, again, you can find our spring and summer program guide all around Anne Arundel County. It'll also be uh, inserted into the newspapers, and uh, that will be out. And it will be in the Capitol. It should be in the Capitol on uh, Wednesday the 20th, and also the West County News and the Gazette on the 21st. Great. So. You can look for that. You can also look for it online at our website, aacounty.org slash recparks. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks to both of you. Well, there is certainly so much to do in the county and at little to no cost. Be sure to check out the guide because many of these programs fill up fast. Well, speaking of pocketbooks, as Kristen likes to talk about, we have some good news and some bad news about a local company. The Ebby Brown Company in Marley Neck plans to lay off 200 employees. If you haven't heard of it, the company is a national distributor of snacks, candy, and tobacco products. A company called Liberty USA will take over many of the accounts, so no worries for customers. Kristen, you can still get your Juicy Fruit, your Fritos, and, well, as Dave says, your Marlboros. I don't the smoke. Mar I know. Neither do I. The Maryland, and no one should. The Maryland Department of Labor Licensing and Regulations is working to find new spots for the employees, so that's some good news out there. Yeah. And Kristen, we couldn't let this episode pass without a great sports story. Of course we like sports. Now, we don't have video this time, unfortunately, although we do have photographic evidence. Put it up there, please, Chuck. The Maryland Gazette has made us aware of a Pasadena man who bowled back-to-back -back perfect games. That's right, folks. Two perfect games in a row. Normally, that only happens when it has a blizzard, when we have snow this much. But no blizzard this year. And it's pretty rare, though. Kristen, what do you notice about the scorecard at all? I, I don't know. What am I noticing? Well, Jerry Niccolo conquered the feat at the Greenway Bowl in Pasadena. In case you aren't familiar with bowling, that's 24 strikes in a row for two scores of 300. Yeah, I've never hit that. Neither. <laughs> never come close. Carol Leonard, the general manager of the alley, said she couldn't remember seeing anyone accomplish two perfect games in a row. So wow. congratulations to Jerry. I will, however, say that my son, Brandon, could kick your butt in wee bowling. And my cousin, Brandon, could kick your butt in wrestling. I still don't see him. <laughs> I still don't see him. We're getting Where ready. is he? I don't know ready. how to tell him yet. All right. <laughs> Well, folks, it's time for Last Laugh, where we pick a viral video that strikes our fan fancy, and it's so hot, hot, hot. I have to admit that the midshipmen at the Naval Academy are kind of a blessing and a curse when it comes to viral videos. First, it was Katy Perry causing a stir by kissing a mid on stage, and then they posted their Gangnam Style video, which we should have done that. 
We can do Gangnam Style. Should've. We should have. Gangnam Style. Well, this week, the Harlem Chic is all the rage. And sure enough, our mids have weighed in with Gangnam their style. version. Let's take a look. Con los terroristas. <laughs> Like I said, blessing and a curse. Good job again, guys. But let's get back to studying, okay? <laughs> How do they do that? They, How do huh? they do that? So do you, just go, you just kind of do crazy stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's kind of like me. I can do that. Oh, you'll be fine. I would be fine. We should do a Harlem Shake video. Dress classy, dance cheesy, right? That's Gangnam Style. That. This is Harlem Shake. Well, I'm using it for Harlem Shake. Too. Uh, you can Gangnam Style during Harlem Shake. All I bets will. are off. Oh, I bet you I will. Of course, the Air Force, the Army, and yes, even the Marines have videos. Parents, be careful with that Marines video. Just a special public service warning from Kristen Lagana. Kristen Lagana. It's Kristen all Lagana. about Kristen Lagana. Who said that? The Kristen Lagana Show oh. with Kristen Lagana. Starring <laughs> Kristen Lagana. Produced by Kristen Lagana. I don't get what you're getting at. Well, you know. You never know. You never know what's going to happen around here. So, Eric. Yes, Kristen. You like to Gangnam Style? I do. I can do a little Gangnam Style. I think we should try this Harlem Shake thing. You think we should try it? I, I don't see why not. You know, we gotta. You know, we gotta take it slow. We gotta take it easy. A lot of our weekend lessons? reviewer, I probably do need lessons. Do you dance? Um, not well, but I try. I subscribe to that motto: dress classy, dance dress cheesy. fancy, classy. I like classy. Classy. Yeah, I don't. I don't dance as well as you sing. Let's just. Oh, oh so that's so know, sweet. Thank I you so much. <laughs> well, folks, a lot of change is happening here at the county. Um, you know, as as we know, we have. Uh, as we think, you know, if the council did what they were supposed to do on Thursday evening before we taped the show um, and didn't have any hiccups or problems with <laughs> You have a new county, county executive. executive. We don't know who it is right now, but by the Whoever time you're watching this, is, you know who it is. <laughs> We know that there were 16 qualified applicants that came in here. All 16 of them uh, had their strengths in a lot of aspects. And uh, we know that the voters of the Anne Arundel County will, uh, will be receiving the new county executive well. And we wish him or her well on their tenure of 21 months here in the county. I'm so a little sad that my pick didn't even run. Who was your pick? Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. My he has a wheel of fortune. Oh Could be good for this county. Oh my gosh. County, Folks, county resident. On that. <laughs> that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv and on YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free, yes, free video podcast at iTunes or like us on Facebook at Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more news and highlights and a new county executive. Maybe we will even have them on the show from around your county. We'll see you next time.